Hi, this is Abul Hussein coming to you direct from London, the United Kingdom, and welcome to another episode of the SMA Mastermind podcast, where we talk about how you can start or scale your digital marketing agency. Now, if you are watching this episode outside of our Facebook group, make sure to find the link above or below this video or go to smmamastermind.com. Now, with that out of the way, I have a very special guest joining me all the way from Long Island in New York. His name is Phil Rinaldi and he is the founder of RWS. Now, a lot of people would think, you know, you're going to be quite crazy to be launching a business right now, but that is exactly what Phil has done. So let's head over to him and kind of discuss what's going on. Phil, welcome to the show. Thank you, Abul. Thanks for having me. I look forward to uh, you know, sharing my story and uh, reaching your audience and letting them know, uh, you know my message, my story, and how I uh, got into this. And you know, I look forward to it. Thanks for awesome. having me. Well, well, you mentioned story. So, I mean, for the people who are watching this and they don't know who you are, how about a bit of a background into your story? Because I know you've been in this space for over a decade now. Yeah, so I mean, I'll try to keep the long story a little bit short. Uh, so I'll basically, since 2008, I've been developing websites and I started first creating websites and then I got into driving traffic to websites and it was a real passion of mine. So ever since 2008, so about 12 years now, I've been working in the digital marketing space and um, you know, it's a big passion of mine and I've been jumping around from employer to employer, employer to employer, just, you know, learning new tricks of the trades, new strategies, and, you know, helping businesses grow. And, you know, all while doing that, I've actually been freelancing on the side, you know, helping uh, people close to me, building relationships and, you know, performing some of those, you know, short-term tasks, helping them get their website set up or, you know, fix errors here and there, and even helping them out with simple marketing strategies. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from there, I basically started uh, building, building a book of clients. I mean, it was all freelance. I did it maybe not even more than 10 hours a week because at the same time I've been working full time. So, um, you know, for the past 10 years, I've been, you know, gathering these people that I've been close with and helping them solve these problems. Okay. And then, I mean, you've got RW, does RWS stand for something? How did the idea come about? I mean, or have you just transitioned from being freelance to being full-time agency? Yeah. Uh, well, so recently, I you know, same time last year, I was actually working full-time for an employer and doing freelance. And I was doing freelance as uh, Rinaldi Web Solutions, which is my last name. Um, it was just, you know, a, a corporation I set up just to uh, get my finances in order and do it all through there. And then just a few months ago, you know, COVID hit and shut everything down here in the state. And unfortunately, you know, the company I was working for employed almost 100 people and right. they, they shut down for completely for five months. You know, they only had about 10% of their uh, company working. And I was one of those people that got laid off at that time. Um, since then, you know, just about a month ago, they are back in business. You know, they, they, they got over the hump there and, they, and they're now, you know, starting to uh, get rock and roll in there. And uh, they gave me a call back. They wanted me to come work for them, but I decided to turn them down. Um, basically, while the country was shut down and I was laid off, I took the opportunity to, you know, work more on my freelance and work more hours for those clients that I was serving and actually find new clients. And, you know, I've been big into having, you know, an entrepreneurial mindset and being optimistic and being completely positive. I, this, about this time last year, um, I was getting into like Grant Cardone's 10X. I was going to his events. I'm getting into ClickFunnels and the Funnel Hacking Live community. And they're just so awesome there. And they really just, you know, cultivate like the entrepreneurial ship mindset. And they really, I have to give them a shout out because they really got me going and inspired me to, um, you know, take that entrepreneurial leap and, you know, walk away from the nine to five, you know, great salary position and pretty much go off on my own and get all these clients, at, you know, that are now depending on me and I'm depending on them at the same time. It's, it's, it's a big leap. Um, you know, I'm very nervous to take it. I'll be honest. And that's kind of the reason I didn't take it for the longest time. Um, but I, I was able to get over that and it's all about a mindset and, uh, you know, taking the risk, especially during COVID where 
a lot of businesses are struggling and they might not have marketing budgets or they might be closing down. I, you know, I took this opportunity to be able to help those businesses. So that's basically been my strategy uh, mm. to grow it and, and get started. So I, I've been uh, speaking with, you know, small businesses local in New York and, you know, helping them solve these challenges. And I've been able to sign on uh, a few clients to get myself started and really get out there and going. Awesome. That's an absolutely awesome story. And kudos to you for turning around to your former employer and saying, well, I'm not coming back. And you touched yeah. on the funnels and the community and Russell Brunson is probably one of the greatest marketers of our time, of our generation. So, you know, I know there's a huge community on, on Facebook around that. Now, what services are you currently providing your new and existing clients? Is it mainly around web development or are you doing providing marketing services such as, you know, paid advertising, SEO, et cetera? Yeah, so I'm actually, I, I do full, ser full range of services. Uh, quick backstory, I have been, I'm all self-taught in web development, uh, Google marketing, SEO, Google ads, Facebook ads, and uh, an agency I priorly, uh, prior worked with, I was actually a project manager and I, I was able to manage all of the different, uh, you know, people that we outsourced to perform these services. Um, so I have experience in everything. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm actually helping out businesses with you know, SEO, web development, web design, uh, social media management and paid media management. Um, but I also go a step further into helping them create strategies to grow online, um, you know, long-term strategies and how to set themselves up for success. Mm -hmm. And are you, um, the, the work that you're picking up, are you outsourcing it right now? And are you being a project manager? Or are you doing the fulfillment yourself as well? Yeah, well, that, that's a big challenge of mine right now, actually, because I'm, I'm very hands-on. And like I said, I can do all of this stuff myself. So, um, you know, it's just me at the agency right now and all the work that comes in, I want to do it myself. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to go in there and get it done. But um, as, as more clients are coming to me for help, you know, my time is, it, you know, I don't have the time to, to, to do all these things myself. So what I'm doing is I'm building out a network of uh, freelancers and contractors to perform some of the services. Um, I'd say about 30% of my services are outsourced. And then 70% uh, I do myself right now. Uh, but over time, what I'm looking to do is bring on a team to perform these services. And I oversee it all currently. Um, just to get myself started, I'm getting a few clients uh, under my belt right now. And as I do that, as I grow on a scale, I will be able to uh, bring in project managers that can hire, you know, control, manage all these uh, freelancers and contractors to provide these services. But you know, I, I definitely want to stress that I'm taking pride in, you know, having a high level of value that I provide to my clients. Um, so any like freelancer that I'm finding, I, you know, I have to vet them first. I have to um, see the quality of the work and see if they meet my standards, um, which has been a challenge. It's, you know, it, it's once you find someone that's good at something, you want to hold on to them, but they don't always have availability. So, you know, ultimately it, it's going to change and I look to bring on people full time. That I, that I want to work with and trust to perform these services. Um, but currently it's a mix, you know, I'll try to get in as much as possible because I, I really enjoy it. Um, but I just don't have the time to do everything myself. And I, I totally feel your pain because yeah. people uh, like yourself and it's me too. And a lot of people I speak to who have specialist backgrounds who have done the hands-on work. Often we are a bit cautious about delegating about, you know, yeah. letting someone else do the task where we feel we can do a better job and we feel this obligation to deliver to a certain standard for the client that we feel that only we can hit that bar. Now you are talking and you know, like you make client acquisition sound, sound so easy, right? And I speak to a lot of people and a lot of people who are going to be watching this episode, you know, they'll, they're struggling to you know, get their agency off the ground because they can't pick out pick up clients for all sorts of reasons, whether they lack experience or COVID or whatever it might be, you know, how are you currently acquiring new clients? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a great question. And, and I totally understand the challenges that some might be facing. Uh, I've been quite fortunate though. You know, it's, I, I really try to focus on building relationships. I, I, I like to call it that instead of, you know, client acquisition. Um, because that's truly what it is. I mean, these business owners are looking for help to grow their business. 
and they're looking for people they can trust and build a relationship over a long period of time. <clears throat> you know, me and myself, I don't really go after people that need like hourly work or five hours here, or four hours there. You know, I look for businesses that are looking to uh, bring on someone and bring on an agency that can perform, uh, you know, monthly services, you know, over six month or 20 month contracts. So that, you know, that's my target audience personally. And um, right now, all of my clients have actually been from word of mouth, uh, which that's why I'm saying I'm fortunate for, but, you know, I take pride in that as well. You know, people have been willing to spread the word about, you know, me helping them. And I think as a small agency and as a startup, that's the best way to grow. And it's helping me, you know, hold back on scaling a little bit while I, you know, get the pieces together. Uh, because if I wanted to start advertising or bringing on a sales force, then, you know, I might burn out real quick and I, I might scale too fast. So right now I'm bringing on clients and I'm trying to scale my team at the same time and may, mostly uh, by word of mouth. But um, I definitely have a strategy where I'm focusing small. And I, I recommend that I'm not looking to get clients from all over the, the states right now. Um, all of my clients are local. They sell products all over the states, but they are all local to me. You know, I can actually build a, a physical relationship with them. I can go to their office. Well, not really with COVID right now. I've been trying to stay home a little bit, but um, I'm able to go visit them and see them in person. And that makes the, a, a huge difference. So where, when you can start small and local, I recommend doing that. Um, right now we're, my agency is building out a, our Instagram uh, following and we have a profile where we're actually going to uh, small businesses on Long Island and we're, you know, focusing on their product, their services and their team and we're giving them a shout out. So we go to uh, a business every week and we give them a shout out on our Instagram and we take some great, you know, professional style photos of their products, their service, their team, uh, you know, absolutely no cost. It actually gets me in the door too. I get to introduce myself. You know, I'm wearing the RWS shirt and they ask, you know, what do you do? I do digital marketing. Um, so I'm not going door to door per se, but I, I am. I'm getting out there, getting my name out there, um, getting in front of business owners. And ultimately the goal with, you know, Instagram, for example, is to gain followers on Long Island. You know, I want, I want customers, I want people on Long Island, not business owners, but people. Because if the more people I have local, the more businesses I can go out and say, hey, you know, this is how many followers on Long Island, for example, I have 5,000 people um, that are, you know, looking at my Instagram to, you know, get eyes on these featured businesses every week. Are you interested? And, you know, that kind of gets the ball rolling. And that's the goal is to just, you know, build local, build small, and, um, you know, scale from there. And eventually pick on pick up a sales force where I can actually start making calls to businesses and um, start an advertising campaign to bring on new clients. And that's an awesome strategy to get your foot through the door where you're giving something for free initially, you know, just so you can start that conversation. Now, obviously, you're getting a lot of work through word of mouth, and you have been freelancing essentially for the what 12 years, I'd say, for a, for, for a decade. I mean. When you were picking up your initial freelance clients before the word of mouth, mouth uh, momentum kicked in, what challenges were you facing? I mean, um, did, people, did people want to see results beforehand? I mean, how did you kind of pitch them back then? You know, I've always, I, I thought that I would have that challenge when I first got started um, because I had a challenge of I built websites, but within a couple of years, those websites might have changed or someone might have hired someone else and completely redid it. And, you know, my portfolio of work is gone. Um, I faced that a few times. And then also a lot of my freelance clients were startups. So I didn't have these impressive portfolios of, um, you know, an increase in traffic or, in, in, you know, how much, what the return on investment was. And, you know, that, that, that kind of limited my mindset and put me into, like an imposter mindset where I thought like, okay, I can do this, but I don't have any uh, proof of it. And, you know, it forced me to actually price myself very low at first. And I was willing to do, you know, projects um, at, a, at a low cost compared to competitors. And uh, I don't regret that. You know, I, I think it was good when I first started because it helped me get more experience and more work for, you know, a lower budget. But, um, I, you know, that, that was a challenge of mine at first, but what I've learned is that 
it doesn't exactly take that. You know, what, as I was saying before, it's all about building relationships and trust. And you just know when customers know that you're going to be there and you're experienced and you're in the industry and you're on top of all of the trends, they start to put their trust in you. And that comes with, you know, a video meeting or a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, when, it, when it's like pre-sale, when you're just reaching out to them, they're probably going to go to your website and try to find that, uh, that proof and that trust to say, okay, he just worked with this brand. Um, he's got these results. Um, so I actually haven't had to, um, you know, map all of that out and, and show all that proof up front yet. Uh, you know, I look forward to actually building that out for when I do plan to scale, I'll have that proof and all of that in there. Um, and to show all testimonials with that. But, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate right now is where I can actually build these relationships with people and, and they put their trust in me. And, you know, I do, I can show work if needed. I have referrals um, and I, I let them know that up front. I, I say, okay, um, would you like a, a referral in the e-commerce? And they actually, you know, aren't really interested in it, surprisingly. They, 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 they just kind of trust me from, you know, the charisma and, and the, you know, going back and forth in the conversation. So, um, I've been fortunate with that, uh, and it hasn't been really an issue for me. Mm -hmm. um, and li like you mentioned, I suppose when you have the referrals and the experience in your pocket, right, and you don't sound like an imposter when you're conversing with yeah. them, you know, they're not going to do the due diligence because you've kind of established your credibility and authority by how you hold that conversation with them, which is something that a lot of people do. I suppose miss out on. Now you mentioned you're working with local businesses uh, on Long Island. Um, are you working in any particular niches or are you working with anyone and everyone who needs your support? Well, you know, I don't work in particular niches because every single one of my clients are in a different niche and it's just, it's always been that way. Uh, it's been nice when I go to new clients that are in a niche that I have experience in, I can, you know, let them know the ropes and, you know, what challenges they might face. Um, but the part that really excites me about this business is getting into new niches and getting into new businesses and learning new industries and learning new, you know, average cost per leads for different industries because it's so different. And what I have learned is that, you know, one thing that works for one business is not going to work for another. Um, it, it's completely, you know, different customer avatar that you have to focus on. Um, and then you have to find to, you know, get to fine tune that audience that you're targeting. Um, it all basically works the same. You know, you have the strategy that you apply to everyone, but every single audience is different. And, uh, you know, I, I really find passion in that because, you know, I get introduced to new, uh, new customers, new industries, new business owners. And I continue to, to learn and evolve. And I think that's important. And if I was to st stay in one niche, not that there's anything wrong with it, um, I think that it might kind of, you know, hold me back from growing and, uh, you know, possibly scaling further in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, I suppose that's a great approach to take when you're trying to, I suppose, kind of expand your own skill set as well, where you are able to kind of go into a market and because you have similar experience, you can kind of take the learnings and ap apply it there. Now, um, how much time are you actually spending on prospecting versus delivering uh, the service? Yeah, so, I mean, right now, I, I'm spending a lot of time on delivering service. And, and you know, I, I'm at a point where, you know, I was working eight-hour eight days at my full-time job. I moved over to owning an agency and now they're 12 hour days at least so you know and, and that's me right now and i'm like okay well uh i'm okay with that right at starting out i i understand that's going to take work to get this thing off the ground and going and i'm willing to invest all of the whole time i need um so i'd say 80 i would say 95 percent of my time is focused on working and then five percent on prospecting you know it's all coming in word to mouth. Um, I've set up a very simple onboarding process that has allowed me to not spend a lot of time in bringing you know, new clients on. Um, and how that works is basically if someone is interested, I will send them 
Um, I have a, a like a Calendly software service to schedule an appointment. I have a Zoom conference call that's immediately uh, scheduled for them. And you know, if someone's interested, I send them my availability. I'll get on the phone with them if needed, but typically we'll just meet once. We'll go over for completely free. We'll go over the project. And then from there, I have uh, like a proposal and document sign process where I can send over an estimate. I'll take some time to, to get the estimate and proposal together on how much you know, time will, it will take for all of the services that they're looking for and try to estimate a, a cost. And um, I also present different costs. I present different options. So tip, a typical proposal for me will include a month to month option. It'll include a six month option and a 12 month option. And I will discount the 12 month option to entice people to choose that over the month to month. You know, I really try to avoid hourly contracts um, and the month to month. So, you know, in, in digital marketing, it takes time for strategies to actually, you know, pick up and be effective. And um, the first couple of months, even if you're on it, like starting out a new campaign or a new advertising um, campaign, it, it could take a little bit to craft and hone in on your audience and try to achieve like a, a profitable campaign. Uh, every industry is different, but it, it takes time, especially with SEO, which is a, a long term strategy. Um, so having a month to month contract is really difficult and stressful because you know, I have overhead that I have to cover and I'm depending on this income now and to have to think about, okay, I have to um, provide like an amazing value and show amazing results in a just a month is, you know, it's actually unrealistic. So at, at the same time, I'm trying to set expectations. I'm trying to provide as much value as I can and over deliver where I can. And I'm trying to build these relationships where people are, are comfortable with signing six month or 12 month contracts, which gives me a lot of flexibility to grow and to um, you know plan expenses. And if I want to get an office, I can forecast, okay, I have this income coming in, or if I want to hire uh, additional help, you know, I, do, I can you know, rely on those contracts, those contracts to do so. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's a great way to take uh, approach to take when you're trying to create that predictable revenue so that you can start planning, planning growth. Do you do any cold emailing or any cold calling? No, so I don't, I don't do any cold email or, or call and I don't think I ever will. I just, I don't have, I don't think I will personally, I just don't have the personality for it. I mean, maybe I do. I just, I get uncomfortable with, you know, selling coming off as selling. I'm a very transparent, straight to the point person. Um, if someone gives me an idea, their idea, I'm going to tell them it, it might, might not be a great idea and I'll tell them why. I'm not going to try to sell them on myself, you know? So, you know, I think there's a difference where, you know, a salesman or someone that's, you know, smoother talking can kind of frame that in a better way. Um, but I don't do any of that, but I do, I would love to bring on a sales team that does cold calling just to get more visibility and more, uh, you know, business owners to hear my name at least, even if they don't um, sign on. Uh, but personally, uh, over like over the past eight years, I've been branding myself as a digital marketing specialist. And that right there <clears throat> has been, you know, my form of marketing you know, I've gotten my uh, name out there. And for everyone that's local to here on Long Island, all my friends on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, they know if they have a digital marketing challenge, oh, Phil Rinaldi, you know, he's in the space, he knows about it. And I was able to do that by, you know, being active on social media and just trying to get, you know, you know as much content out there as possible. And, you know, even just a few months ago, I launched a YouTube channel and I have, you know, almost 40 videos on there where I'm actually going into different, you know, strategies and tips and tricks um, on camera, which is something that not a lot of people are doing local to me. Um, you know, I got, in, I got interested in photography and videography and I set up a little studio in my apartment and I started shooting these videos and posting them all over Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So. Uh, you know, that was a big help actually, because it stood out to people scrolling. They're like, oh, I remember that guy from high school or, oh, I know that guy. And, uh, you know, I'm actually talking about marketing. So 
uh, you know, whenever people actually think of, you know, they need help with a website or marketing, you know, they, you know, I come into the picture and they'll maybe remember me. So that's been my biggest, you know, asset when it comes to finding new clients other than word of mouth. Oh, that's a lot of great tips just kind of in there. Now we are very quickly out of time, so we can go on forever talking about the past decade, you know, building up your business. And maybe we are going to do a follow up episode in a couple of months to see how you're doing. Now, you know, final question for, uh, for you, Phil. A lot of people who are watching this, you know, who might be in a job, but they want to make the jump because they have the skills acquired working in an agency or they're working in house or they're just starting their freelance business. You know, what tips can you give them to set them up for success? Yeah, um, I'd say the tip is to just do it. And it, it's it's hard to just do it. And I understand the, the fear and the anxiety and the stress of leaving a safe position at working full time. Um, or if you're going from job to job and you have, if you have this entrepreneurial spirit and you want something to be yours, if you have any interest in building a team around you and building a, a brand, then, you know, you have to go for it. You'll, you'll be upset with yourself if you don't in the future. There's no issue with failing. There's no problem with failing. You know, I always have a mindset that I expect to fail and I hope to fail to learn from that failure and I you know I just keep playing that in my head for every challenge I face that it's a learning experience and I'll be able to take it to my next job or my next client and, and just keep growing from that um, you, you want to make sure that you can get the pieces together just to you know pay the bills but once you have you know a couple of months of savings even I you know I would go for it and if it doesn't work out, you have the experience to go back into the mark the job marketplace and, and get back to that position if you need to. Um, but you don't you won't know unless you try it. And for me personally, it's paid off, and I've been fortunate that I've gotten clients right away. It just you know it happens. Word of mouth happens, and, and you start picking up. And if I was thinking you know a month ago that I would have this, I'd be like, oh well, you know. If I didn't, if I didn't have this, I, I would be thinking about going back to work, but I'm excited with what I have now and what's to come in the future. So I'm just going to keep putting as much effort and work into it. It's not going to come easy. Just got to keep sticking to the grind. And I think you've nailed it there with mindset. It's all in there. On that note, Phil Rinaldi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Abel. Appreciate it.